I don't even think that's from a special day. Mm -hmm. That's a, just a normal day. Good, perfect. And yeah, our bike racks are terribly outdated. They drive us all crazy because um, they're yeah. like the wheel benders. Um, yeah. But uh, the kids just like, it's nice because they can lock the gates and the kids don't all have to lock their bikes. Hi everyone, I'm John. Welcome to the Active Towns channel where I share a selection of my podcast conversations and videos profiling some of the promising efforts and transformations happening in our cities around the globe. I do this in the hope that I can help inspire the continued growth of this movement to create and promote a culture of activity for all ages and abilities. And in this week's episode, I'm super excited to introduce to you Megan Ramey, a parent and Safer Streets advocate who's on the ground working hard to make her small town of Hood River, Oregon, a safer and more inviting environment to walk and roll, especially for the most vulnerable of street users, the children, elderly, and those individuals with disabilities. Thank you so very much for tuning in. It's always wonderful to have you along for the ride. I sincerely hope you enjoy this conversation with Megan Ramey. Megan Ramey from Oregon. Megan, how are you? I'm doing well. It's uh, a little bit of post Thanksgiving hangover, but good. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And and post uh, cyclocross season too, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm seriously gonna go into withdrawal. It was. Um, it was one for the uh, memory banks, that's for sure. And yeah, I will really, I already feel like I'm, my body is um, just not uh, getting as much energy out as I was uh, racing. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was one heck of a season for me. And right. so, yes. Well, so for those people who, uh, you know, may not be super familiar with uh, bicycle racing and specifically with cyclocross, tell us uh, what what's that all about? It's a wacky sport, isn't it? It is. And yeah, fun fact is I don't wear spandex very much. Um, it takes a lot to get me in spandex <laughs> unless it's like under a skirt or something and I'm biking like 60 miles in a day. But cyclocross is essentially it reminds me of just being a kid and racing through the woods on my 10 speed. And mm -hmm. so it's 45 minutes usually, um, as fast as you can go for 45 minutes, however many, uh, laps And the course is preset and it's got a bunch of shenanigans. And that's always my favorite part is like, how much can I dismount and get back on my bike, carry my bike, run with my bike, um, it's not just riding your bike, right. it's making, um, just thinking on your feet. And I think it's a lot, the reason why I love it so much is because it reminds me of biking in the urban environment and just having to go with it, you know, like sometimes the curb, you have to lift your bike up and over it and you have a bunch of stuff on your bike. <laughs> like, I don't, it just, it, it's so much fun to me. And uh, I think the best part about it is the support, uh, right. how supportive everybody is, especially the women and, um, and, and also of like the kids racing. And so, yeah, it's, it's always in environments that aren't the one problem I have with like bike racing is how disconnected it is from transportation, um, advocates in a, or bike advocates like me, I'm trying to bridge the gap. Um, it's always in a location that's really hard to get to unless you're driving. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we tried to do it three times this year, um, car free and yeah, and did that. But, um, other than that, it's just a riot. It's like an all day tailgating event. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. tons of families and free range kids and, and yeah, the only time you ever see me wear spandex. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and I love it too, because it's, you're right, it's like this massive obstacle course and the muddier the better. And, and you know, people have, there, there's such a, an amazing fan support, you know, system, you know, like, the, you know, the fans will get, you know, near the the most difficult bends and corners and hills and and really cheer people on. And, and so it's a, it's yeah. a really neat sort of, uh, it's like a, it, from a bike racing perspective, it's like this counterculture thing. 
Yes, totally. Yeah. And yeah. it's, um, I think anybody who just gets on a bike and, uh, you know, rides the whole time and has a smile on their face right. is just going to make so many people happy. I mean, there was a guy that rode a, um, one of those like low rider, um, bikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the shortest little wheel or a uh, pedal. Um, what do you call them? Anyway, no stroke whatsoever. It was so hard for him to do it. And he yeah. completed the course. It was nuts. And, and yeah, I would say the spectator part of it is like 50% right. of the actual day. And they're just, everybody's so excited to be there. And also heckling is a big deal. Uh, hand ups. So um, whether beer is allowed or not, <laughs> <laughs> right. sometimes you, you get a beer hand up for Halloween. There was lots of candy hand up. Sometimes there's bacon. I mean, you never, <laughs> yeah. you never know. And it's, yeah. And yeah. Talk about, uh, it was a crazy season for weather. Yeah. We, um, I was running through mud up to my knees wow. and oh yeah, my it was, oh it was pretty. And that was my, I think the best I did because nobody likes dismounting their bike and I just like, okay, I'm running. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. In fact, yeah. you, you, you ride with flat pedals, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you have your <laughs> and, running shoes on anyways. <laughs> yeah. I have my trail running shoes and it's funny because some of my teammates, they just, uh, I think I'm a, I'm almost like counterculture to cyclocross counterculture, right. which is like, <laughs> So I, yeah, I wear trail running shoes. I refuse to wear clip ins, yeah, um, yeah. clipless because it takes all the fun away from me. I just yeah. like, like to be nimble and I, um, I, it's just, it's such a joy. So, yeah. um, yeah. And then I don't pre-ride the course, which a lot of my teammates huckle me about because they're like. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Like, and I was like, I like to be surprised. Um, and they're like, what are you talking about? That no, nobody doesn't pre-ride the course. Right, right, right. That's so, so funny. Yeah. Well, hey, we we got off on a little cyclocross uh, tangent yeah, there, sorry. but uh, what what I'll have you do though is, why don't you give a little bit of a background of of who Megan is and how you got out to Hood River. And, and, and then we'll, we'll sort of make that transition over to bicycle advocacy and some of the stuff that you're, you're doing on the ground there. Yeah, I, um, very much like cycle cross. I am just a very, um, I don't know. I, I wear two very different love affairs. One is with, um, uh, car free, carless lifestyle and everything that entails, but also, um, I love to get lost in the woods. And so I'm like, what is that old country? Uh, gosh, who was the, um, that band in the like fifties that everybody loved, like a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. That's just how it feels a little bit to me. I just, I'm a city girl that loves to get lost in the woods. Um, I'm also a huge fan of music. Um, KEXP for anybody out there. <laughs> Peace. I'm a fellow sister. Um, uh, KEXP is the best radio station in the world out of Seattle. And um, yeah, it is my church and I listen to it 24 hours a day. Um, I am a mother and that affects a lot of who I am as an advocate. Um, she's 12 years old middle school and bikes has been biking to school since she was three. Um, and I'm a wife to, uh, my husband, Kyle, who was my frenemy at one point in high school and became my husband. And, uh, let's see. And then, yeah, Hood River. So, um, I've lived in four very distinct areas of the U S first, uh, born in Madison, Wisconsin and grew up in Northern Wisconsin. So I grew up as a free range kid. Um, and then we moved to Atlanta when I was 14, went to high school and college there at University of Georgia, graduated, moved back to Wisconsin to do graduate school at University of Wisconsin. And then, uh, that took us out to Boston where I lived for eight years. 
And it was at the tail end of that eight years. That's Boston is really where I got my advocacy chops. It was at the tail end. Um, I had a really bad road rage crash um, that uh, it's funny because he almost did me a favor. And it's like a kick in the ass of you've been wanting to move to the Pacific Northwest uh, for a long time. So here is your chance. Um, and so, yeah, I created an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, Hood River came up on multiple lists of goals. Um, and I was like, what is this place? Like, what is the Columbia Gorge? Um, and I did a ton of research. Like, why does this keep popping up um, for me? I think the first one was 10 places or 20 places to raise a kid uh, or an outdoor kid. And I was like, oh, that's where I want to live. Um, and then you add the number of breweries per capita, the number of wineries per capita, the fact that there's an Amtrak station, a Greyhound bus, uh, transit. Uh, there was a car rental place when we moved here. There is no longer, um, you know, all the things that make up what I call this like oxymoronic utopia of living a carless life near the woods. Um, and I think we're going to have a kitty bomb here soon. <laughs> here she is. Are you, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> um, she hears me talking. And yeah, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Hood River was ranked among 40 cities. Um, and it came in at like number six. And I was like, okay, that's good enough for me. I think number one, two, and three were uh, Seattle, which is my favorite city, Portland and San Francisco all crossed off because I didn't want to live through the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. Um, then, or the, whatever the San Francisco one is. Um, and then you had Madison, which is where I was born. I love that city, but I'm not ready to retire. And let's see. There was oh Boulder, I think, was up there. Right. Um, and I want to be near water. So yeah, Hood River was like, okay, we're doing it. And I stalked and schemed my husband a job at Tofurky, and the rest is kind of history. And honestly, it's funny, getting a job here for him was easier than finding a house. Um, oh wow, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> our housing situation in Hood River. And it's gotten crazier as you can imagine with uh, Zoom towns and COVID and yeah. Um, but yeah, that's Hood River and it's, oh God, what can I, I can't, there's too short a time to talk about it. It's, it's a really amazing community just because, um, we're between two mountains, Mount Hood and Mount Adams on the Cascadia, um, line. And so we have really rich agricultural soil for farming and that was important to me. Part of the reason I wanted to move here was for climate resiliency, access to fresh water. Uh, I could imagine, I mean, to be kind of dark, living out some um, kind of end of times stuff here and being resilient, um, to put it blunt. Right. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, it's a neighborhood based school system. My daughter gets to walk and make everywhere and uh, just the access to crazy yeah that's the map access to crazy outdoor activities she's both in climbing competitions and cyclocross and then she does whitewater kayaking in the summer um there's just no amount of like what do you call them like uh, alternative i guess outdoor athletics which i love and and yeah, and the beer is always amazing. We have two nationally award-winning breweries here. And then there's the topography. It's like, there's just too much to talk about with Hood River. Yeah. <laughs> I almost want to like do a little whole sales pitch on, um, you know, trying to recruit other <laughs> transportation <laughs> advocates here, grow the, grow the clan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to Boston real quick, just just for a moment. Mm -hmm. Now, did you overlap at all with uh, Jonathan Fertig's in, in, in yeah. when he was there? Okay, great. Yeah, I remember the first time I met Jonathan. Um, it was the night that uh, day Michael Jackson died. 
And <laughs> it was, we were at, um, I was on the board of Livable Streets and he came to one of our events and um, we got to talking about architecture because I love architecture. And, and yeah, and then, um, you know, and then he started down his whole tactical urbanism awesomeness and I just got to watch from the sidelines. I wish I could have been on his dream team, but um, I didn't even know it was really happening. So yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had him on the podcast uh, last year. And so that was a wonderful opportunity to you know get his whole story in that arc of what was going on in Boston and then making the move out to, out to Denver and, and being involved there, but also having an opportunity to step back and not be as engaged and as involved as he was when he was in, in, in really in Boston. And, and partly just because there's more, characters in the in the denver scene that was able to pick up the the slack and and do that so gives him an opportunity to he and his wife to spend some time actually enjoying the outdoors a little bit more so yeah i'm actually envious of that because it's the opposite i find yeah Yeah. well okay so let's pull Um, let's let's pull up your blank canvas here so uh, again (laughs) uh, hood river we're talking about a population of nine thousand people very very idyllic you know there's obviously that's mount hood right behind you correct yep and so just absolutely beautiful and gorgeous but at the same time um all is not perfect right so yes so why why do we need megan to be the the crazy bike lady yeah the crazy (laughs) bike lady i um yeah i've earned that term over the past uh i guess now five years i lived here um I, it's funny, I started out with Jonathan Fertig where uh, I moved to town and I wanted to take a year off from advocacy. I was pretty shell-shocked coming from Boston and what um, I left there. And so I was like, I just want to live live the good life for a year and right. kind of just be ignorant. And I did that and it was great because then I got to know a bunch of different organizations and what work they were doing. And it was very clear that nobody was being an advocate for the most vulnerable. And uh, for me, that's the, the kids, um, but also seniors and mobility challenged um, folk. And I just saw um, my heart just uh, leaps out to help give give them a better way of life in terms of mobility options so that's really where i kind of um i parachuted in was that that voice and uh at first it was uh hosting our first open streets event which Mm -hmm. was streets alive and that was um if you want to pull i don't know if you have one of the pictures in this presentation. Oh, I might. Um, yeah, let me th- Yeah, so so Streets Alive was uh nobody and we stole that name from the Atlanta Open Streets cuz we just loved it so much mm-hmm. and it was uh we got about a thousand people and for a population 9000 town that was pretty amazing. Um it also involved working with Oregon Department of Transportation and getting these demonstration, <laughs> like this was a whole special permitting process they've never been through to get demonstrations on a, on a Oregon State Highway. And um, really trying to bridge um, our neighborhood back together because the highway bisects it. And it's called the Heights. Um, so yeah, the first Open Streets event was like an incredible success. And there was some political fallout from it um, that mostly had to do with me <laughs> creating a what I call just a basic snow shoveling map um, because we had a, a epic winter and nobody was shoveling their sidewalks. Well, actually some. And I wanted to like, you know, applaud those people. And so I didn't realize that I was going to be labeled like the queen of shame. And um, (laughs) I just looked at it as a very like German sort of like transparent thing. Like these are the shovel sidewalks and these are the unshovel sidewalks. But yeah, it had political fallout. And in a small town, uh, you don't want that happening because then you're just like, I don't know, got a negative uh, I guess, a uh, strike on you. And so, yeah, I, I had to take a serious kind of like, I had people like almost like borderline stalking me on socials. I had to block a bunch of them because it was just, it was like 
I was like, where are all my fellow advocates to, you know, there was no tribe to kind of like bandwidth. I was like the radical one out front and that's kind of the whole crazy bike lady thing. Yeah. yeah. That's another de- So that's another demonstration project. It's funny because ODOT uses this in a lot of their communications material. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And then it was, it was still like, it was such an amazing day and I can't wait to host it again. COVID has put a temporary moratorium on it. Um, we have to do it this next year in 2022. Yeah, I, I, I do remember and recall there was quite a bit of drama. Hey everyone, please stand by. We're about to jump right into Megan's amazing efforts to get the kids of Hood River riding once again. But first, I wanted to check in and simply say thank you. It really means so much to me that you're here. Okay, let's get right back to it with the force of nature that is Megan Ramey. I, I saw that sort of tra- play out and I saw you get sort of bruised through that process. Mm-hmm. And obviously I'm seeing this from afar because I'm only seeing what you're able to, to share out on your social uh, feeds and, 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 you know, that's how we ad- advocates uh, oftentimes, you know, keep in touch with what's going on around the world and around, you know, uh, with, with various folks in various cities around the country. And, uh, and so it really, it warmed my heart then to see that even though that sort of the dust sort of settled on that, and then you really started amping up um, on the the safer routes to school and Vision Zero activities. So walk us through that because yeah, yeah. You, you you got your teeth kicked in a little bit and got a little bruised from uh, the Streets Alive thing, uh, but you didn't quit. You uh, dusted yeah. yourself off and went right in again. I think um, I mean that happened right before uh, essentially COVID. And I was able to take a year off and actually remodel this kitchen. I'll do a ton of things. I painted my house. It was like the most tactical I have ever been in my life. Um, and I was like, Oh, this is what I meant to do is use my hands to create real change that I can see right away. And, um, and I'll be so much happier and hopefully other people will be too. And so that has um, really had a profound effect on who I am as an advocate because I'm sick of sitting behind a computer and writing emails and testifying. I mean, testifying in person is great, but um, I don't know. I'm just, I realize my strengths and I'm a builder. Um, and so I've decided that back before then was like, I'm going to do something positive that's immediately uh, helping people. And so that's where the bike train was born. Um, And it was the, it was a long time actually building a relationship of trust with the principal to get it to happen. There was a lot of groundwork, but you know, when back to school happened with COVID, it was like, oh, we're going to do this. Um, Yeah, this was so the principal approached me and he's like, Megan, we, gosh, we really want to see the students again. Um, we can't, we can't figure out a way to plan a socially distanced event. Um, can you help us? I was like, well, you know, like national walk and bike to school day is coming up. Let's plan a bike parade past the school. We won't stop. We'll just keep on going. And, um, it can be like after school, which was like noon, um, because school got let out. And so we planned this amazing event and it was like a hundred and, you know, 30 kids and their parents. And, um, it was such a beautiful day and we were all crying. I mean, I was just, um, completely touched to see the kids, um, their eyes locking eyes with their teachers they hadn't seen in like, you know, seven months at that point. And it was, it was pretty amazing. Um, my daughter was one of those kids too. So it was, uh, especially touching to me as a mom to have her see all of her friends that she hasn't seen in a while. And so that was like the big catalyst event to start what is there, which is the bike train. Um, And that happened. It was organized. Um, I did it on volunteer time just to help um, 
what I knew was going to be really congested school with drop-offs because there was already about 15% of parents biking or not biking, but driving their kids to school. And the principal was like, yeah, we're looking at 45% now. Oh, and I was like, oh my gosh, we have to do something um, to offer an alternative. Not only like for me, there's a lot of um, advocacy around safers to school is um, almost like, again, I learned this from, from advocacy in a small town. It's like very negative against vehicle drop-offs and pickups. And I don't, I don't see that as negative. I see that as opportunity to help lift up those parents um, and free up their time. I'm like, who wants to be spending 45 minutes sitting in a queue waiting to pick up their kid? So I look at it as let's help those parents, um, but also help. I mean, these existing kids that we have are on the bike train every single day and thrive off of it. Um, it's just... I can't <laughs> explain how much joy I just did a testify. Uh, I testified last week at city council for a safe routes to school plan. And um, I said, no amount of words can convey the joy that we experience every day with these kids. And um, I was like, I would like to, to invite you guys to join me again, because it's, it's a, such an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. I and there's, I paused and on it's this. Not, yeah. I paused yeah. on this photo so you could talk a little bit about, you know, the fact that, you know, with this one, y'all are, it's a, it's a quieter street. It's a residential street. You can kind of take yeah. the whole space. And this one sort of, you know, it exemplifies it therein the challenge that, that we have in most of our North American cities. Yes. Yeah, so that prior, um, Prior photo is classic, a classic example of a neighbor way that's just a perfect street to spread out on. Um, no cars yeah. in like ever coming past us. And we have a lot of the routes that are on those streets like that. But yeah. then the next photo you have um, Highway, Oregon Highway 281, also known as 12th Street. Again, I talked about this in Streets Alive, uh, how this bisects our neighborhood. And this is literally the only, my daughter just got home. This is literally the only route to get uh, in a north-south direction. And so um, the kids aren't the only ones that ride on the sidewalk. You have parents with electric bikes, which mm -hmm. is technically against the law. Um, no e-bikes are supposed to be on sidewalks in the state of Oregon, but mm -hmm. that's the only place they feel comfortable. You have tons of other people, whether they're walking or in wheelchairs or mobility devices, it's like, we're all crowded on this like eight foot section. And it's just frankly, not fair. Um, I don't think it's not an equitable, it's not mirroring an equitable community. And so it's great that the, the bike train gets to kind of showcase that. And it's a desire line, you know, yeah. like there's no other way to go. Yeah, I wanted to pull up this shot because, it, again, it, it, it good exemplifies, you know, the, the fact that, uh, you know, the kids are having to share <laughs> the limited, safer space with, with obviously people who are, are in wheelchairs and mobility devices. Yeah, that's that's Ed. And he is such a gracious person. Like, I don't he's very recently in a mobility device because mm -hmm. he had a stroke um, and. I don't know if I would have his, you know, kind of just laid backness. I'd be like, kids, you need to be on the street, you know, like, um, you know, I'm not going around you, you go around me. So, he, but he's so gracious and, um, and yeah, again, it's not fair, um, that we have to be kind of pitted against one another, but hopefully with our safe routes to school plan, this is all like <laughs> fixed and the council was so excited and energized. I mean, the mayor was like, after she saw this plan was like, this is the best planning process we've ever been through. Yeah. And another counselor was like, no project is too big for these kids. And I was like, Ooh. <laughs> I couldn't not show this, this photo too. <laughs> yeah, this has been, um, 
I don't know. I love this picture. Kyle and I have this jam worked out where I ride the Urban Arrow. I'm piloting it and he sits in it. Kind of like, you know, it reminds me of like one of those like video booms or, you know, yeah. film booms. And he gets to just sit in it and capture as much, um, you know, kind of like at grade photography yeah. with people. And that was one of the pictures from National Walk and Bike to School Day. And um, I don't think I feel like I'm not seeing as much. um we have so much density in terms of what I call the dad wagon, which is like this long tail mm -hmm. um, bike and hood river, just because of our Hills. Um, it's amazing to see this exponential growth. I, we could do a whole conversation about e-bikes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pull this one up because this, this <laughs> exemplifies who, when I think of you, this is kind of who I'm thinking of. And, and, and to your point of, you know, rolling up your sleeves and remodeling the house and everything. It, this photo with your urban arrow, you know, packed to the gills with, uh, uh, w with various devices. Uh, what's going on here? What, what are you doing? Why are you loading all this stuff up? What's this? All yeah. About? So it's, it's so funny. Cause I'm actually unloading this stuff. I had made the mistake of not looking at the materials. This is so this is the department of public works at the city of Hood River, they let me borrow all this supplies to demonstrate a school street for National ah, Walk and Bike to School Day. Okay. And so it was it was a really cool day. They had me fill out like an $86 permit and held mm -hmm. like, it was like approved within a week. Um, and I don't know if everybody doesn't know what a school street is. It's where you close down a couple of streets to through vehicles yeah. um, during morning. Hence the model here. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> during morning drop off and afternoon pickup, um, and it allows kids to enter the school that walk and bike to school in a safe way, but also exit. And um, and kind of magic happens when the kids get to talk to each other without worrying about cars coming. And so that picture of me in the cargo bike is dropping off the school supplies or is the supplies, the barriers, everything at DPW. And it was so great to see the workers reaction when I pulled up and uh, you're not in a big pickup truck. No. And it's just, it's again with the kitchen remodel and then this like, you know, train conductor hat I wear now, sorry about the noise. Um, is that I get to uh, show how utilitarian cargo bikes are. And, yeah. you know, uh, just the, what is it? The carry shit Olympics right. <laughs> all yeah. the time. Yeah. Well, I want to go back to, uh, we, we sort of you know glossed over it, the, the crazy bike lady moniker. And, uh, and all, this, this actually is written up in the, the Oregon DOT website. Talk a little bit about this. This is ra rather cool. Yeah. So um, after the bike train was started, I was invited by ODOT's. Um, it was a pedestrian safety grant that they had funds for to fund the bike train um, and to grow it into a walking bus and to host this uh national walk and bike at school day and PE classes. Like I got a $20,000 grant to do a lot of cool stuff with the program. And so because of that relationship and the video that um, you've seen that I created on YouTube, it was kind of just shared within ODOT and it just created a lot of joy and, and happy, happy energy saying like, this is where our funding is going. Isn't it amazing? And so their director of communications reached out to me and wanted to interview me about the, about the whole um, walking bus bike train program. And, and yeah, they wrote a story about it and it was featured in their newsletter. And yeah, I told them about the, it's funny because the whole crazy bike lady label rubs some people the wrong way. Um, but I, uh, made the conscious decision instead of like, um, I don't know, it's like embracing the, um, 
the the slander that people use against you as like yeah, a positive yeah, yeah. and so well you're crazy um, like a fox you know <laughs> isn't that yeah. the term <laughs> yeah and like and when i tell the kids like i'm the crazy bike lady they yeah. love it so yeah, kids yeah. don't care yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah well and you're, it's, you're crazy to to you know to imagine doing something another way you know it's it's poking fun at you know, some of the, the ridiculousness and the silliness, you know, my good friends, you know, Doug and Sarah and, and Aaron, you know, with, uh, with, you know, the war against cars, you know, it's oh, yeah. the whole reason why a tongue in cheek, it's, it's called the war against cars podcast is because, you know, you know, we're, we're always being, um, you know, accused of, of waging a war against cars. Well, yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. It was either a, like, yeah. The radical woman or yeah. the crazy bike lady. <laughs> and then I noticed that they were kind of, yeah, I told you they were kind of stalking me on yeah, my yeah, socials. Yeah. And so I started using my socials to kind of like educate them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, well, hey, like you, I, you mentioned, no, you mentioned this video. Let's, uh, let's press play on this. We'll turn the video, uh, the volume up just a little bit and, and, and let it roll. Feel free to narrate, um, you know, as this is playing. So we can do that as well. And in fact, uh, if you see anything you want to point out along the way. Yeah. I'm not joking. I have eight of them. Think of a king size Kit Kat or Snicker bar and let that control you. I do. Yeah, so that's Mariah. She's our most exuberant uh, bike train passenger. And here we're taking a right turn on um, on 12th Street, also known as Highway 281. And yeah, I am a huge advocate that this needs a demonstration pop-up bike lane ASAP. And um, yeah, and so this is this is all of National Walk and Bike to School Day. Okay. And... So that's the bike train. It's funny. That's yeah. That's our city councilor. And that was a really quick and, shot of Kyle taking a photo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was hard to piece this together. I was like, I don't yeah. want to make it. I could easily yeah. make it for like a long. Those are our Ninth Street stairs. Yeah. And that's the demonstration school street. You see. Well, it'll kind of get into that too. Um, but I kind of wanted to showcase, you know, what does a day in the life of the bike train look like? Mm -hmm. Um, even though we had, you know, a lot higher numbers on national walk and bike to school day, it was a beautiful right. day, Yeah, yeah. but still it shows, you know, both the joy, but also the heart palpitations that we experience, um, when kids are just being kids, like right. they're not expected to have any secret, um, knowledge about how to bike with traffic. Um, yeah. so this was, yeah, the demonstration school street. Um, I mean, this is like what it should look like to yeah. me. This is what before and after school is like congregation. Yeah. And, and just like relaxation. But um, especially when you're like getting the kids home from school, it's like time for them to play and work their wiggles out and then do homework. Right. So what has been so, yeah. the response from some of the parents? So, um, I wish I could hear more from them. Um, I mean, overwhelmingly positive. Right. And it's funny, I hear about it secondhand. Like, for example, last week I had to go get my traction tires mm -hmm. uh, put on our, our forerunner because we were headed up and over the mountain. And for anybody who doesn't know what traction tires are, they're just studded tires. And uh, kind of like for bikes, but for cars. And the when I was... Um, paying for the tires the woman behind the counter um i was like oh man thank you to think we thankfully we don't have school today because there's so much black ice and i leave the like, train to school she's like oh you do that because my like good friend um their daughter amelia takes it every day and she absolutely loves it but yeah i hear about the bike train secondhand uh yeah. which was it uh, which i i almost would rather like that means the word is going around and people feel so positively about it. They tell their friends who tell random business owners and it's just, yeah, it's, um, I do hear, uh, every once in a while when I get to see the parents of just how happy they are. Um, 
not the parents, but the kids. I mean, right. both. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's um, it has done great things for me as an advocate in terms of re-energizing me, uh, knowing who to focus on, yeah. who deserves the, who deserves the most love. Um, yeah. Children yeah. are the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're the future. And, and I pulled this, uh, this photo up. Um, it, this is actually from ODOT and it's, it's part of, you know, that, uh, that program that's out there. So it sounds like you've got a, a productive relationship at this point with ODOT and the fact that they wrote an article, you know, you know, really kind of highlighting what you're doing. I know that there's got to be some tensions too, because, you know, you know, state DOTs being what they are, uh, yeah. historically have been all about moving cars quickly. So it, it is encouraging to see some positive uh, signs and hopefully you'll be able to build upon those. Yeah, I I have nothing but a positive relationship actually with ODOT. I consider okay. them and their engineers and planners to be, you know, I'm sorry, frankly, more progressive than we don't even have a transportation planner yeah. or director for hood river. So it's yeah. very, small it's great. Yeah. yeah. It's great to have that expertise. And they think I, they've told me before they see hood river as like a Petri dish for small towns in the rest of the state. So they can test things here and then roll them out. Um, yeah. And they said that their top two directives this year are equity and climate change. So yeah. Awesome. And I, I wanted to shift to this photo just because I, I find it so encouraging. Whenever I'm traveling around the country, especially when I'm in Boulder, I'll mm -hmm. see you know just the the massive number of bikes lined up at the school. So when I see something like this, even if it is you know on a special day, it's just so encouraging because it really does exemplify what could be part of our future. Yeah, and it's funny because I don't even think that's from a special day. Mm -hmm. That's a, just a normal day. Good. Perfect. And yeah, our bike racks are terribly outdated. They drive us all crazy because um, they're yeah. like the wheel benders. Um, yeah. But uh, the kids just like, you, it's nice because they can lock the gates and the kids don't all have to lock their bikes, but it just That's shows cool. you how I, I, I will, challenge anybody any of my fellow advocates i think hood river has the most bikes per capita yeah the caveat is that there a lot of them are car bikes meaning right. that yeah. they are put on <laughs> cars right yeah. um, well, so we, you see that in boulder too so yeah, yeah. there's yeah. so much opportunity to yeah. connect the dots yeah. <laughs> on transportation biking well, and, and, and I'm glad that you, we led this off with cyclocross and, and, and the, the racing side of things and, and blended it very, very quickly into the fact that um, you're, you're just like me. We're both sort of unicorns in this, in this manner that, you know, I have multiple bikes, different types of bikes. I love, you know, all cycling. Um, and so it, it's... It, to me, it's not about whether I'm wearing spandex or not, whether I'm wearing a helmet or not, rarely wear a helmet anymore <laughs> for going to the grocery store. Um, the point is, is, is just being able to, the joy of writing, just getting out and writing. And it's not about tribes and it's not about this or that or what's better. It's just, it's whatever we can do to, you know, get some active mobility and, and active living, be part of our culture. So, yep. yeah, yeah. And I don't, it's funny. I've even considered myself more of a walker mm -hmm. in Hood River uh, because with the topography, it's just a better healthy outcome for me. Um, right. And then just, I feel more connected almost to the, to the streets and the people here. Um, biking, it almost feels lazy <laughs> right. because it's so dense and small that you're going to bike maybe a mile, a mile and a half. Right. to get anywhere you need to go. So, um, yeah, I'm very much a fan of bridging, um, building bridges, trying to in, in a way. Yeah, yeah. So is there anything that we haven't yet talked about that you want to make sure that we, uh, we cover? Hmm. I would say, um, well, let's see. There's a couple things. One is the um the policymakers e-bike ride i did mm -hmm. um 
And that was pretty amazing. Um, that was uh, organized by Oregon Environmental Council, and it was a series of six of them. And I was um, pointed out to help organize the Hood River uh, sort of Columbia Gorge contingent. Right. And right. so, yeah, I invited all of like I'm. I happen to be friends with the um, our state rep who lives locally, Anna Williams, and. Um, got the mayor, some other counselors and planning commissioners. And it was like one of the most epically gorgeous days. <laughs> like, I hey, that helps take it. <laughs> it, it could have been it could have been miserable, but it was 69, 68 degrees. Yeah. And like the leaves were just changing. It was like early October. We got really lucky Friday afternoon. Um, and it was just a joyous ride and there was a one point where we stopped to take a picture of the whole group and there was a husband and wife there that were also i told you my cat was just going to be sharking sharking us <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, <laughs> um there was a point where we needed our picture taken and there was a husband and wife there that were also doing the ride and they um took our picture and then they were listening to us do our mini talk which mm -hmm. i was talking about you know the myth of e-bikes cheating i was like they're cheating at life and she yells out like they're just casually watching she yells out like yes and starts crying profusely and is like this day is forever changing my life and i can't imagine a better way to live out the rest of my life. I think she was in her young sixties. Okay. Um, and the whole group was just watching her have this emotional, you know, epiphany about e-bikes. Right. Right. And this, and this all... photo right here, this is the representative that you were talking about. No, this okay. is mayor Kate. And oh, so mayor, mayor Kate, Kate. Okay. Mayor Kate was there with us. And uh, so we're okay. all just looking at each other. And then when she stops talking, I'm like, I promise I didn't, hire this lady <laughs> like this is too amazing yeah. and so then we bike back and i did a social post on how amazing the ride was and mayor kate jumps on my instagram and says yeah talk about life changing i just bought a bike <laughs> like, <laughs> no like, way that's yeah, great she, yeah she bought a bike the very next day after riding her first e-bike and i was just like talk nice. about a stretch talk about a stretch goal like yeah yeah never would have planned that. So I've uh, seen that happen though, you know, so many times is it, it it's, you give a person an opportunity to experience it. And it's just like, it, it makes so much sense. And, and there's like very little hesitation. They're like, yeah, getting a bike, getting it done, going to start doing what I can to, to get this into, you know, my everyday routine. Yep. I happened with my mom. I took her on a ride. It was like 15 miles mm -hmm. in the Columbia Gorge on an e-bike. Right. And she got back to Madison and bought a bike on Craigslist, like an e-bike, like yeah. done. Like, yeah, yeah. I think they're so powerful in terms of cultural change. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back over to, to, to this image because, <laughs> again, when I think of you, I, I think of, you know, all these different uh, – uh, dimensions that you have. Uh, you you uh, just got back from Tucson, right? You guys were, were down in Tucson doing some touring down there and doing, because uh, that's a whole other part of what you guys have. So so talk yes. a little bit about that. Um, just so you know that uh, Laura and I, we both have Bromptons. And so whenever mm -hmm. we're traveling in in the Netherlands, we make sure that we have our Bromptons with us. So I, it, I, was, I was tickled pink to, to see that you were traveling down there with Bromptons. Yeah, so um, I started a little hobby of a website in 2014 as like, I called it Gateway Drugs for the Bike Curious. <laughs> um, and people sometimes that rubs them the wrong way, but whatever. Um, and it's a travel site on, uh, now we have over 30 travel guides for how to wander cities by bike. And it's not really about biking, it's about eating, drinking, sightseeing, and biking just being by far the best way to see everything. And yeah, that's my website. Um, so I say hobby because it doesn't really pay me much. It's uh, it's a labor of love and it's how I get my advocacy slash tourism kind of all combined. 
Um, and so I was just in Tucson. Uh, it'll be our first travel guide for Arizona. And um, honestly, it was a, it was a hard one for me. Mm -hmm. They they got a lot of work to do. Yeah, uh, sure I think that seventy five percent of my riding around there was on sidewalks. And I am a competent urban biker slash. You already heard about the cycle cross thing. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not ri I'm not risk averse. But whoa, um, but I figured it out. Like thankfully for uh, this woman named Kylie, who is like the me of Tucson, took me around and showed me kind of like the underground network. But yeah, we had our Bromptons yeah. and um, I fly with them everywhere. I put them in overhead, uh, never have issues. Every once in a while, there's a, um, a gate agent with a little head trip, but- Yeah, yeah. that's um, what I ran into. I, I no longer, try to carry it on just for that reason. I, yeah. The I just, secret is you never yeah. let them see it's a bike. I know, like, I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah, saw that you always... had your, I saw that you had your, your, your little black cover, the, you know, canvas yep. cover over it. Yeah. 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 Over they it. say, what is that? And I'm like, it's a mobility device. So they just, <laughs> that was Don't what you. I would always say. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So, yep. um, but yeah, I bike about is, um, I guess they're just like always running in the background um, mm -hmm. yep. and I, and I love, I love to see new places and trails um, and then just uh, help other people do the same thing, following my footsteps or wheel tracks. Yeah. I guess I should say. Good stuff. So, well, we're yeah. going to have to get you here to, mm -hmm. to Austin. Uh, Cause I know that you have oh, not gosh. done Austin yet. So. Yeah. yeah. Austin will definitely be the first city in Texas. <laughs> yes. um, and it's like, I would say it's top three cities for me, just in general, like being a big music fan. Right. Um, yeah. I'm so super anxious to come down there. So yeah, yeah. We, we're, we're going on eight years now here. And, and uh, when I launched Active Towns about a decade ago, uh, you know, people kept saying, dude, you've got to get to Austin. You need to profile Austin. It really does have a culture of activity. And, and uh, so I was, uh, absolutely uh, delighted when I had the opportunity to, to make my way up here um, from San Antonio. I was actually presenting at a, a conference, Health in the Built Environment Conference down there that the Health oh, Authority cool. had put together. And um, my friend Chuck Marone with Strong Towns was a uh, co-presenter. Yep. Oh. So, yeah, so he was the keynote nice. and I followed him. And uh, <laughs> so we, we made our way up this, uh, this way and I spent three days here. Um, visiting a friend, Preston Tyree, who you might know Preston or have heard of him. He used to be a, yeah. a, a league coach for the League of American Bicyclists. Oh. So so anyways, long story short, we made the move from Hawaii to here about eight years ago and just absolutely, you know, enjoy it. Uh, we're able to, to live pretty much a car light lifestyle, um, not have to drive that vehicle too much and pretty much able to, to bike to meet most of our needs. And the, the thing that's most important, and hopefully this will be something that will be very helpful for other cities, especially in the, in the Southwest, is having a demonstration city that is putting in all ages and abilities networks and getting the protected infrastructure in and, and doing it in, you know, in an environment where people are just like, you know, no, that wouldn't work down here. This is the South. No, that wouldn't work here. It's too hot. You know, all of the, the quote unquote excuses. So it's wonderful to, to see, to be able to have and be able to point to a location and say, no, it, seriously, this, this can totally work. And I know yeah. that that's one of the great things that, um, you know, for, for cities such as Hood, Hood River, the fact that you have Bend not too terribly far away, obviously you have Portland, you know, right there. And so there's hopefully some opportunities to say that, you know, hey, we know that in our topography, we know that in our climate, this stuff can be done. It's just about, it's about the political will. It's about putting forth that effort and making it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I have, as a planning commissioner for the city of Hood River, have grown to appreciate, um, not grown to appreciate, grown to just like be laser focused on what are all the small towns and cities that are around population 10,000 that are doing really cool stuff. Right, and right. how can we copy them? Like Hudson, New York, I think is doing some really cool things. They just yeah, got rid right. of a parking minimum. So as much as we can like 
I guess, band together and copy each other and lift each other up. It's going to be like small towns are where it's at. I saw this amazing graphic of like um, something to do with population where uh, most Americans live in rural communities and small cities. Um, and, and we're kind of in need of active mobility the most. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's really inspiring what you guys do and holy cow, Chuck Maroon. That was one of the best books I read this year. Oh, good. Which one? His first one or, or the first, uh, str- not the second. Yeah. Strong towns. I read. Uh, just wait till, no, you read, wait till you read confessions. It's even better. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yay. I, uh, he's amazing to me in terms of his two hats he wears. Yeah, absolutely. Well, final question for you. What would be your best day ever? My best day ever. What would you be doing? Gosh, it's so hard. Okay, so I think I have a, a good one of like a wish list of what I really want to do is um, there's some epic bike camping to be done um, with, you know, sort of some uh, fairy uh, hacking in outside of seattle where you can go to um what is that awesome little island it's uh bainbridge it's um oh gosh there's the san juans bashan i know not the san juans but um it's right across the sound oh got it yeah into go into go bike camping over there but before i do that (laughs) is um just to go pay tribute to my church of kxp and listen to some live music I was going to say, there's um, got to be music in there, too. It can't just yeah, be about like camping. <laughs> I can't express, I don't know, if you ever Google any band's name, um, the KEXP Live in Studio session will come up on YouTube. Nice. And it's just like, it is It is really like watching almost like surgery happen. These musicians are in their element. The yeah. sound quality is so amazing. Yeah. and uh, And yeah, just being in Seattle. Uh, downtown is uh, so invigorating to me because they're doing some really cool things with protected bike lanes. And yeah, um, yeah I, I have, uh, every time I go there, it's like going to a zoo almost like just seeing like the newest stuff that's happening, but then, yeah. And then I need my like nature. So I got to go bike need camping. Your nature fixed. <laughs> so yeah, it's live music and bike camping, I would say perfect day. Fantastic. Megan yeah. Ramey, it has been such mm-hmm. a pleasure having you on the Active Towns podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Kubo says hi. Hey, Kubo. <laughs> Or bye. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this episode featuring Megan Ramey. What I love the most about her story is that really it's not that special. She's just a mom that thought, you know what? I can roll up my sleeves and try to make a difference where I am right here, right now. And as she explains, sometimes you're not completely successful in all your efforts, but you develop a thick skin. And if you keep coming back and keep trying, you just might be pleasantly surprised that next time around, or perhaps it's the time after that. Now here's my call to action for you. If you found this episode helpful and interesting, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with others. And yes, I'd be so honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just be sure to ring that bell for notifications. Well, that's all for now, folks. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.